A large model showman's engine, part 84, completing the ornamental cylinder cover by trying it in place and machining the outer diameter to fit. Before I even think about fitting the cylinder cover and the new ornamental cylinder cover, I need to remove all traces of the gasket material from the cylinder, and I'm doing this using my chisel. It's an old wood chisel, sometimes I sharpen it, sometimes I flatten the end, depending on what I'm doing with it. But in the clip you've just seen, I sharpened it, and it made short work of removing the gasket material that was left stuck to the cylinder. Time to see if everything fits. The first part to be fitted on is the original cylinder cover, because the ornamental one has to encase this. When I tried the ornamental cylinder cover in place, it was a little bit tight, between the regulator gland and the exhaust pipe to the chimney. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to have to make the cylinder cover smaller. This could prove to be difficult. I need to decide which machine to use to hold the cylinder cover by the inside. The chuck that you've just seen, the big one, is the four-jaw independent chuck on my Smart and & Brown, and this is a three-jaw independent chuck on my Boxford lathe. In the end, I thought that four jaws were going to be better than three, because don't forget, as the material gets thinner, as I machine it away like you see me doing here, the part is going to get weaker as the metal becomes thinner, so I thought it would be a good idea to use the four-jaw independent chuck. The jaws are physically larger, and there are four of them. After all the work I've done on this piece of stainless steel, I don't want it to go wrong during the very last part of the job. Lubrication and fine cuts is the order of the day. I am going to run into a problem though very shortly. The tool needs to go just past the part that I'm machining, and at the moment I have to stop just before the end. I do have a solution for this, and before I get a barrage of abuse from the keyboard warriors, let me explain. What you see me doing at the moment is turning away part of the chuck jaws. I'm doing this for two or three different reasons. The piece of stainless steel cost me £75. This chuck, when I bought it new, was about £150. And to be honest, parts of it are not 100% true. It's quite good at holding things externally, but the faces on the jaws that you see me machining are not accurate to start with. You can clearly see this by the fact that the cylinder cover is not running 100% true. I tried packing, I tried all sorts of things. In the end, I decided to do it this way. I'm machining the outer diameter of this cover using one of the carbide tip inserts that I bought recently, so it's brand new and very sharp. This is the universal problem in a small home workshop. I don't think the lathe is running fast enough for the chip breaker on the tool to do its job. That's why it built up so badly. Here I am, right at the end of the cut. The sound of the cut and the video shows me machining the jaws. Personally, I am quite happy to do this on this particular chuck. I wouldn't do it on one of my more expensive chucks, like my Bernard Collet chuck, but then again, I wouldn't need to, because that is fully accurate. When I turned the inner part of this cover, it was clamped in position with the other set of jaws the other way around, so I could machine the inner diameter. But now when I've turned the part round, and believe me it's pushed in firmly, I use my tailstock for this, you can see that the front face of it is not running particularly true. I don't need to bother about this, it's not a precision item, it's just a cylinder cover. That's why I look forward to machining the original jaws to get them a bit truer. In this clip I'm turning a chamfer on the edge of the cover by using a round nose tool the wrong way around in the tool holder. This tool is designed to cut from left to right. But I'm not bothered about that, it gives a really nice smooth and even chamfer. Now it's outside into the garage to check that everything fits. Here's the traction engine with the cylinder cover in place, and now the new cylinder cover, the ornamental one, is a perfect fit. It doesn't foul anything at all. And to double check this, I refitted the gland cover, and there's plenty of space. And here is the gland cover with the nuts back in position. There is just one tiny problem. A couple of the studs are longer than the others. 
and for that reason I'm going to remove the two overlong studs. Using a pair of lock nuts locked together, these have a washer in between them because I forgot to remove it, but the point is this makes it possible to withdraw a stud just like unscrewing a bolt. In this clip I can see another problem that will need some attention. The threaded hole that you can see at the side of the cylinder is designed to take a bolt to hold one of the canopy supports to the cylinder. Obviously now I have a larger cylinder cover over the top of the smaller cylinder cover that is a problem. Looking at the job from this angle I can clearly see that it would be possible to machine the outer cover a bit thinner but then it would be quite weak. I don't want to do that. I'm going to make an adapter which will move the canopy support slightly further out. In this clip I'm not using any super strength, I've already used the spanner to slacken off the stud and I just removed it by hand for the final bit. With this stud now removed it's time to do the same to the one above it. In this clip though I'm showing the spanner part of the operation. Same principle, a couple of lock nuts, undo it with a spanner, when it gets slack enough just spin it out with your fingers. All of the nuts and bolts from the cylinder I put on top of the belly tank so I knew where they were. And as you can see, they now have a couple of additions, being the studs that I've just removed from the cylinder. I'll take these into the workshop and shorten them slightly. After this final test fit, I stood back and looked at it, and I think it looks quite nice. This is not a compound, so there aren't two of these fancy cylinder covers, but you can't have everything. This is just a nice, simple, easy to fix single cylinder traction engine. And I really do like it a lot. Here I'm rotating the flywheel to make sure that the piston hasn't stuck again and know it's very free. As I'm doing this I'm thinking that maybe the cylinder isn't getting enough oil from the lubricator so I'm going to have a closer look at that. I do notice that the oil in the lubricator goes down very slowly. So maybe the cylinder isn't getting enough oil. I'll look into that shortly. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.